<laughs> I'm here with uh, Fabien Chevalier. Um, I, hope, I hope that pronounced that right. Yeah. Um, uh, as you just heard, I'm an associate professor at the University of Nottingham um, in linguistics. Yeah. Um, and with some questions about uh, ethnomethodology, conversation analysis, and related uh, approaches to research. Um, so, uh, Fabien, could you tell us uh, what are the basic um, ideas behind conversation analysis? The idea is really to understand how interaction is organised and ordered, uh, the structures behind them, and also to understand the practices and methods, procedures that people use to construct the world but also make sense of it. Um, it's not something that's random, it's not something that's uh, imposed from outside, but something that we build together as we interact um, in particular um, systematic ways surprisingly systematic ways. So we're trying to understand how people make sense of the world uh, through the talk that they use. Okay, yeah. and so, so what are some of the research methods of conversation analysis? Well, the key thing would be that uh, contrary to a lot of work done on language, particularly linguistics, for example, we would always work with what we call data. So that means recordings of actual interaction that were done for purposes other than research normally. So they're not occasion for the research. Uh, we might have telephone recordings, video recordings, um, and we work from those which we uh, listen to time and again with a transcription system that allows us to capture things like not just the pronunciation and what people say, but also the silences, the pauses, um, the use of breath, um, various aspects that typically tend to be ignored in interaction, but actually have uh, a meaning and that we pay attention to when we listen to other people and when we talk. So we work very much with actual data and a transcription system that allows us to um, pinpoint some of the non-verbal aspects um, as well and also to capture the, the sequentiality of, of turns. So how what I'm saying is related to what you've said and vice versa mm -hmm. rather than just a series of things that follow each other. Okay. And uh, so, so what are some of the benefits of conversation analysis? Well, it really gives you an insight into... Um, what we do on a regular basis, something that we take for granted. Um, it allows us to understand how conversation, uh, ordinary conversation is structured, um, the normative practices. So for example, you can understand how um, using language contributes to the building and the maintenance of a society. Without realising it, we sort of reproduce particular practices, ways of being, uh, conduct in effect that we recognise as being doing British or being French or being whatever, uh, or being part of a particular group and mm -hmm. we can um, look in great detail at how that is actually done and um, map that onto what we understand or know about that society. Um, so it allows us to understand how people uh, construct the world, how they make sense of it um, and also at a wider level to understand how human beings are able to communicate beyond the simple meaning of words, which is what a lot of linguists would like to uh, suggest is the case. So what, what is the relationship of conversation analysis to linguistics? And well, the key thing is that conversation analysis, because of the materials that it works on and the ways in which it works, very detailed sequential analysis of, of the talk, it sheds light on new light on uh, the properties of language, because it's looking at spoken language, a lot of linguistics is based on written language and the concept of well-formedness, so um, what is an acceptable well-formed sentence. Um, what it allows us to show is that people don't speak necessarily in sentences, um, people don't speak in what would be considered well-formed sentences, um, and people don't speak in the way that they write. So it's horses for courses, the methods that we use are adapted to the kind of research questions that we have and what we want to understand, but it allows us to see spoken language as the primary means of communication rather than written, the written form and the proper form held within our head somewhere, which tends to be the way in which traditional linguists um, look at language. Okay, and so to put this in context, could we better give us an example of some of the research you do? Um, well, I've, I've got several interests. Um, I like, I'm, I'm very interested in the organisation of social action because that's what CA is looking at particularly, what we do with language, things that requesting, offering, accepting and so on. Um, understanding how um, social actions are organised, the kind of tools and methods, resources that each individual use or we use to, to do that. Um, 
in order to understand what those actions are, but particularly how they are actually done, and whether those differ from language to language. So we know sort of the kind of actions that are being done, but we don't know whether they're done differently across languages. Um, so in terms of um, comparison, that's something I'm very interested in, particularly in terms of the culture. I've done a lot of work on French. Um, and while some of the actions are the same, they tend to be done or responded to um, in a somewhat different way in French from what has been described for English. So it's a, it's a very interesting cultural tool in effect. Um, intercultural communication doesn't tend to use C as much as it could really. I think that once we have a body of knowledge about different languages, we can start comparing um, similarities and differences in languages. So that's one aspect, social action and how they're done. Uh, another thing I'm really interested in and I'm working on at the moment is the differences between ordinary conversation and what we call institutional talk, particularly the kind of variations and modification that um, interaction in a particular professional setting can show in relation to ordinary conversation, uh, particularly where those professional settings um, put constraints on people in terms of what they can't and can say uh, and how people manage those things. Uh, because ultimately we relate to how we normally do um, ordinary conversation and so um, it can be quite an effort to work around uh, constraints that are imposed on us in terms of the way we can interact with others. Um, so mm. cultural differences, or cu culture, as a, see as a, as a way into culture, um, institutional talk, um, and then the other thing that um, interests me um, uh, a great deal is understanding um, the grammatical resources that languages offer uh, in terms of, um, and that's more related to the linguistics aspect, what kind of linguistic resources are available to you in a language to do certain things that may not be available uh, in other languages. Mm -hmm. um, that has a massive impact for learning languages. Um, although most people who do language acquisitions who don't do CA wouldn't do, wouldn't do that, wouldn't see that. So language learning, um, I think CA has a lot to offer in terms of um, just going beyond just learning mm -hmm. the words in one language and in another. Um, so there's such a range of application in terms of professional discourse, in terms of cultural aspects, in terms of simply understanding how we as human being, uh, beings communicate. Um, so um, one of my interests is to do with institutional talk uh, and particularly within that tourism interaction. So uh, the interaction between tourist offices and people who phone or, or communicate with tourist offices um, because those have particular practices that are restricted, some constraints um, that um, imp are imposed upon the agents, what they can and can't say. Uh, and because they talk to a range of people who have different interests, um, there's also no work done on interactional uh, conduct in, in tourism settings. Um, so that's one of my uh, key aspects at the moment. I'm doing some work on French at the moment, but very interested in doing comparative work with uh, a similar corpus of yeah. telephone calls across English and other languages, if there are any. Because I think it's important to build an understanding of um, different institutional settings. Mm -hmm. The majority of the work is on medical interaction at the moment. Um, it's interesting and useful to know about other institutional settings and how the various constraints um, mm. manifest themselves in the talk and are managed by the various participants. Okay. Thank you very much, Fabienne. Right. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.